This is Lieutenant Miano with the New Jersey Transit Police Training Unit going over the use of tourniquets for serious arterial bleeding. It's most important when you have severe arterial bleeding, meaning bright red spurting, pumping blood, that just like when someone has cardiac issues and we send someone to call 911 before we start CPR and apply AED, it's the same for an arterial bleed. It's important to get advanced care rolling, calling 911 or if you're an officer getting on the radio and calling for advanced care. Once that's done, wherever the, the vessel's bleeding, we want to apply direct pressure, okay? Today we're talking about bleeding from the legs, the femoral artery, and the brachial artery of the arm. We want to apply direct pressure. That can include even kneeling on the wounds while we provide other care. Direct pressure is simply pushing hard and steadily without interruption on the bleeding vessel. Whenever applying direct pressure, if it's clear that you are not able to stop the bleeding, there's still bright red spurting blood, which is indicative of arterial bleeding, we need to go to the next step. The next step under current guidelines for serious arterial bleeding on extremity is to apply a tourniquet. A store-bought or commercial device is usually more effective, efficient, and easier to put on than an improvised implement. But you can improvise a tourniquet. Two common tourniquets that are issued by many police departments and are available for citizens to purchase are the Combat Application Tourniquet and the SOFT Tourniquet. For all tourniquet use, it's very simple. I'm applying direct pressure on a vessel in the legs. I may apply pressure with my knee. If the subject is conscious, I may even have them apply pressure. I'm applying direct steady pressure and I'm seeing that the bleeding is not stopping. The next step is to apply a tourniquet. Whenever we apply a tourniquet, it's simple. We apply it high and tight. If there's bleeding anywhere on the arm, I'm gonna apply my tourniquet and I'm gonna go all the way up, high and tight. When applying a tourniquet, I'm gonna cinch it down, taking as much slack as possible out. It's crucial that I do this so that by turning the windlass, I will cut off all circulation to that bleeding vessel, saving the subject's life. Usually it takes about three turns. Once I have serious bright red bleeding blood and I've decided that when I'm not sure I'm gonna apply a tourniquet, I'm gonna turn the windlass until the bleeding stops. Once I've seen the bleeding stop, I'm gonna snap it into this catch here and that will hold this in place. I'm again gonna ensure that advanced care, EMS is in route and I'm gonna check for other vitals. I'm gonna make sure the subject is breathing, has pulse, is conscious or not conscious and relay that to emergency services. I'm then gonna treat for shock, the most crucial of which if the subject is breathing and has an adequate heart rate is to keep them warm. It may become necessary to improvise a tourniquet. Weak implements like string will not work. You do not want to use thin items like shoelaces as they will cut into the patient. A sturdy belt such as this and to improvise a windlass, a large flashlight or other solid piece of metal or wood or in this case polymer will work. Pencils and pens will not work. Utilizing a belt, again, I will gently get around the affected limb and I will kneel directly applying pressure to that serious bleeding femoral artery. I will then tighten the belt, taking out all slack. Once I have done that, I'll insert my windlass. Ensure it's as tight as I can, get it? Securing the belt. And begin to twist the windlass. It's important to note that this windlass will be under a lot of tension to unwind. I will need to somehow secure it if tape is available or other straps or another belt will also work to do such. For instance, I cannot emphasize enough that a simple $30 or $40 device will be much easier to apply and more effective than a field application tourniquet. In the Boston bombing, there were three fatalities, but there were 11 people who survived despite one or more limbs being traumatically amputated by the blast. Their ability to survive these injuries, in addition to immediate trauma surgery, was the application of field expedient tourniquets. This is Lieutenant Miano with the New Jersey Transit Police Training Unit.
Be safe.